So the thing about having a weekly show is that sometimes something really interesting will happen on a Wednesday, <laughs> and then I'll be forced to wait an entire week before I can talk about it with y'all, or at least if I don't want to break my own model. Um, but that's a double-edged sword because as kind of happened with the, um, the DC riots, it gives, uh, it gives me an opportunity to get more information than I otherwise would have. So uh, I've been following the, um, the uh, Wall Street Bets versus GameStop uh, story. It is absolutely fascinating to me, and I'd like to talk about that. Uh, one thing that I want to make perfectly clear, uh, and I hope, first of all, I really hope that I'm not going to be like too uh, segmented uh, throughout this stream. I, uh, th throughout this segment, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of half ideas, and I hope I can string them together into something coherent. But uh, one thing to make perfectly clear, we are witnessing a mass amateurization of speculation. And it leads to things like this. So, uh, I, oh, one thing that I want to make perfectly clear before I dive in again, and I'm pretty sure this won't affect you, but, oh, you must be this tall to ride. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, You've already been explained dozens of times what shorting a stock is. Um, I myself, uh, it, it's the kind of thing that you hear a lot, like, oh, you can make money when, this, uh, when there's a recession. And I don't think much about it for reasons that I'll explain shortly as well. Now, the, the thing is, uh, yeah, the, what is happening with this chart here, this has nothing to do with investing. This is all speculation. So investing, uh, and, and I'm speaking in layman's terms here. I'm, I'm not an expert. Don't take financial advice from some loser who lives alone in his mom's basement, okay? Um, this is not what this is about. But investing is um, when, you're, uh, when you want to, you know, diversify your, your portfolio and build wealth in a way where uh, you're, you're kind of riding the highs and lows of the market and staking your claim along the way. Whereas speculation is where you're trying to beat the market. This chart is people trying to beat the market. And it's not the only one. Uh, I know GameStop is the, uh, the entryway for a lot of people. But uh, as you probably know, uh, they... they They've spread uh, even as recently as as late as last week. They were they were um, uh, talking about AMC. Uh, they were talking about uh, 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 silver and things like that. We'll get to that. Um, but the idea is um, that, and and I have no idea how this is going to play out in the long run. Uh, but the cat's out of the bag, and either hedge funds will have to massively change the way they operate or their uh, Washington DC cronies will uh, just change the rules and regulate everyone out of the business, uh, which, will, which would cause an interesting potential counter moves on the part of like the masses, you know? Um, so, yeah, let me uh, start with some definitions because this is part of why um, there are a lot of terms that I myself uh, didn't, uh, didn't quite know what they meant until recently, until this GameStop thing happened. So the reason for that is I listened way back when to a podcast called the Radical Personal Finance Podcast. Um, this is a... Um, it's a podcast by a guy named Joshua Sheets, and in one of his early episodes, he covered the basics of the stock market. And unfortunately, um, I couldn't find like a nice clip that I could play for you, uh, but uh, it, it was good for me to refresh uh, the, the definition. So there are three 
main things uh, that come into play in the in the stock market: stocks, bonds, and derivatives. So, a quick uh, summary of what those three things are: a stock is your you're taking ownership, you're taking a, a tiny piece of ownership in a company, and you get to participate in the, the joys of being a partial owner of that company. Some stocks pay dividends, some stocks do not. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. A bond is an IOU, so you're, you're loaning money to this company, and they give you a bond, which is basically, hey, uh, I promise to pay you back this amount of time in these payments by this date. And that's, that's what a bond is. Derivatives, derivatives are basically just, <sighs> derivatives are these fancy instruments that we make up that derive their value from the performance of stocks and bonds. So uh, <laughs> as soon as I realized that, I was like, you know what? Derivatives are dumb. Uh, I'm I'm not paying attention to that because once you once you enable like two parties to say, hey, what do you think will happen with this company? And the other one says, I think it's going to go well or it's not going to go well. And the other one says, hmm, <laughs> uh, care to make it interesting? Oh, let's type up the paperwork. And then you have things like. Uh, short selling and put options and call options and I don't know much about derivatives because they're stupid. Uh, but again, this chart is um, a bunch of. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna have to learn when to click in what screen because I'm pointing over here. Anyway, this chart is um, a bunch of uh, speculators way back when back here saying, oh no, this is the four hour chart, let's go to the daily. So yeah, this chart is a bunch of speculators back when GameStop stock was worth about five bucks and saying, you know what, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna go even, even more down. So they shorted it. And, and the, um, as you presumably know, the, the slimy thing about shorting a stock is that you're, you're placing a bet that something will happen to a company, but in a way that increases the odds of that thing happening, uh, which which fucking sucks. You know, I I borrow a stock that I don't own and sell it. Uh, that will tend to make the price drop uh, as I am betting that the price will drop, and that's fucking slimy. And then the um, you know some uh, some some Redditors went, oh yeah, you want to do that? Well, fuck you. And then they, they did the short squeeze. Again, I'm assuming you know what this is. So, where was I in my notes? Okay, yes. So, uh, the, the whole thing of uh, uh, derivatives being stupid and this chart having nothing to do with it, like, if you got in uh, around here, uh, you're a fucking winner. It would have to collapse entirely like it almost has uh, for you to, to come out a loser. The, the um, <laughs> short squeeze, a good, good rap name. Good, <laughs> good one, Mike. So uh, yeah, the, um, if, if, you, if you're some Wall Street bets guy and you got in at this point here, uh, you're, you're a fucking winner. Uh, those of you who got here, like this chart is fucking broken. Uh, this has uh, um, very little to do with technical analysis. This is uh, this is a broken chart. Actually, I'm curious of something. Let me just look. Okay, okay. I was expecting these indicators to be a lot worse. Let me see the relative strength index. Okay, cool. Uh, I I was expecting it. To, so GameStop was oversold right up until here, and then the Robin Hood incident, which we will cover shortly, um, drove it back down. So, shit. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's go to a uh, a thread that Ben Shapiro posted on uh, on Twitter. Uh, we're going to cover this because uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, 
Ben Shapiro, former Breitbart contributor, uh, is, um, I, I doubt that he's a, a big Wall Street guy, but he, he probably knows more about this than you or I. Uh, so I want to cover this thread on stream because even though I led saying, you know, derivatives are stupid, they might not be that stupid. Maybe, maybe I'm the dog here. So let's read. How long is this thread? Yeah, it's not that bad. All right. Much of the enthusiasm for the GameStop prank is rooted in fundamental misconception that the stock market is merely a casino. This is untrue. Actually, I, I agree with this. Um, the, um, the casino aspects come from derivatives, like um, buying a small claim in, uh, of ownership in a company. That's, that's fucking legit, just as lending money to a company at interest. Uh, that, that's legit. But when you're, when you're betting on... What? <laughs> I'll I'll try to do Shapiro's voice, Mike. Uh, so yeah, the, when you're um, when you're uh, when there are two parties making bets on what's going to happen, that's when the casino aspect comes in. So uh, uh, the stock market ha the stock market provides three goals: uh, liquidity, options for companies, investment opportunities for stockholders. Proper pricing of assets through aggregation of information conveyed through transactions. Those who trade in stocks each day are in it to make money, just as you do your job to make money. A benefit of the free market, their trading, which is institutionally rooted in assessment of stock value, provides three. Okay, so this is one, two, three. Wait, let me, uh, let me just make sure I understand this. So, the trading which provides liquidity to the company and investment opportunities for stockholders, provides, uh, oh, an aggregation of information. Yes, absolutely. I don't like clicking on individual uh, tweets in a thread because of the risk that one of the replies, which is, which uh, abides by Twitter's TOS, does not abide by YouTube's TOS. So let's, let's continue. Um, the GameStop guys believe that the market is a casino, that the stock traders are speculators who do not provide three, and that purely gaming the system is how they make their money. If we all believe that, nobody should invest in the stock market, period. Um, actually, that's, that's kind of true I'm, uh, in the sense that uh, I, I have no interest in uh, speculation. Uh, I am... I'm, I'm interested in investing, and uh, maybe there is something to this, because I, I actually disagree with the first part here, that, uh, um, okay, you add the word all here, so if all stock, stock traders are speculators who do not provide information, that would be true, but uh, I guess there are some, so yeah, let's, let's continue. It is actually illegal to engage in the pure pump and dump in which you lie to fellow investors about undervalued stocks in order to make the profits when you drive up the price and sell. What the GameStop guys are, are doing isn't illegal because they're not lying. They admit that GameStop isn't worth much. They're just in it for the laws and screwing the hedge fund guys, which does uh, which does make this funny, but also reinforces untruths about the market generally. In other words, there is a reason eat the rich is trenching. The, motiva uh, the motivating factor here isn't really hedge fund corruption. Isn't it though? Okay. If you if you're worried about the stop uh, if you're worried about bailouts as I am, you should be telling the government to stop bailing out financial firms. It, <laughs> it is pure dislike for hedge fund guys. Yeah. Some hedge fund guys are jackasses, some aren't, but undermining confidence in the pricing mechanism of the market uh, just to make some quick cash and screw those who isn't, um, and screw those guys isn't virtue. Though again, it would take a heart of stone to not laugh. So, wait. Yeah, uh, the chat's being funny. All right, so, um, what do I think of this? Yeah, so, uh, Listen, let me just put it this way. Um, uh, I, I Earlier on, I, I kind of led with the difference between investing and speculating. Uh, I think that to, to, to pretend that shorting a stock 
is not speculation uh, is is kind of uh, I I can't I can't make that connection uh, to 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 argue that betting that a stock will fall in value is not speculation is ludicrous to me. Uh, however, here's what I will say: uh, while while these guys are um, betting on GameStop being uh, uh, you know, going bankrupt and subsequently getting tr counter trolled by Reddit uh, uh, in this chart. What I what I remember this this brought back a memory um, back in uh, Friday, March thirteenth, twenty twenty, when uh, you know Quebec went into lockdown last year. Uh, I remember uh, the the. Um, the recession had already started, like the S&P 500 was going, uh, was falling like a stone. And I remember uh, speaking to one of my friends and telling him, like, it was probably not that Friday, but it was uh, within the last days before Quebec went into lockdown in most of the world. I remember telling my friend, man, I wish I was in a position to buy Zoom stock. Yeah, okay, I don't know why Zoom information isn't available before April, but um, again, had had I been in a position to buy Zoom stock back in, oh, this is, okay, it's March of 2020, yeah, around here, um, I would, uh, I would have been a happy guy. Uh, that's, that's kind of the difference between uh, investing and speculating. <laughs> this is not financial advice, but let me drive this home. So uh, the idea is, uh, and again, I don't know how this is going to play out, but we are now in, uh, we're now in a period. This is the equivalent of weblogs. Um, becoming, reaching mainstream consciousness where people uh, in their day-to-day -day jobs are like, oh yeah, really? I could just open an account on blogger.com and just share my thoughts with the world? Well, now it's, it's, um, it's the financial equivalent of that where uh, not only have apps like Robinhood, which I almost forgot to cover, I'll, uh, I'll tack that on, um, have, 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 um, Robinhood has, permitted people to like invest in the stock market uh, now we're seeing the equivalent of um of mass coordinated speculation taking place and if i was a hedge fund manager i uh i would be very careful which companies i chose to bet against because uh now the the question of well <laughs> what will what will the, the gamer bros think? Uh, it will be a more and more relevant question uh, as the time comes. Uh, unless, of course, there's a major rule change which uh, just makes this whole conversation irrelevant uh, and basically forces things to the dark, the dark web or whatever. Because if you think things are bad now, um, like I can't imagine how much worse it would get if like the the Wall Street bet subreddit was was uh, banned and then they had to go on this uh, this uh, black site or shit like that. That would be uh, like Reddit investing in speculation on the market is bad enough. Can you imagine like Paul from 4chan doing the same? Uh, that that would be uh, really interesting. Uh, not in the good way. So let me uh, circle back to something that I almost forgot to cover, which is uh, the, let me just go back to GameStop, uh, GameStop here. So yeah, um, this candlestick right here, was that Thursday? Let me see. Yeah, that was Thursday the 28th. Yeah, yeah, it was. So this 
the the reason that uh, this fall happened right here um, was because Robin Hood suspended its services. And I know it caused a huge uproar. Uh, you're probably aware of it. But I just wanted to share this um, alternative take, which I have not heard a lot. Um, there, there is a potentially uh, legitimate reason why Robin Hood would suspend all trading for GameStop in particular um, that I want to show you. I will play a short um, clip from a YouTube video that explains this. Let me just make sure that my uh, desktop audio is at the right level. And uh, yeah, let's so, begin. At its most basic level, the stock market is just people buying and selling apples. But there are three things worth understanding that keep everything moving super smoothly. Firstly, there's clearing brokers. Clearing brokers are the people who are actually at the Apple market doing the trading. You're at home and you instruct your clearing broker to buy some apples. And these are essentially the apps you use on your phone like Robinhood or Free Trade. Secondly, there's clearing houses. Clearing houses are the places where the two clearing brokers actually do the trade. The clearinghouse is like a market stall with a police officer standing over it, making sure that the trade is actually what was agreed. Now, this is pretty easy when it comes to the buying of apples, because the policeman just checks that clearing broker A has an apple and clearing broker B has a dollar. But in real life, it becomes a bit more complicated for the clearinghouse and police officer when we're actually talking about the stock market. This is because, continuing with the apple analogy, there are too many apples being traded too fast to keep up with all of them in real time. So instead, the policeman lets you trade before it's actually happened. This is why you can buy stocks from your Robinhood app at home immediately, but the trade itself is settled later. Normally, each clearing firm has two business days to make sure that you really do have the $1 or apple you promised, get it off you and then show it to the policeman. Now, this two-day lag entails a real risk for that police officer, because sometimes you agree to buy an apple for a dollar, then when the clearing firm phones you in a day's time and says, so where's that dollar you had? You say, ah, oh, I had it yesterday, but now I'm bankrupt. This means that the trade can't be settled and you've defaulted on your side of the trade. So the person selling the apple is left penniless. To accommodate for this risk, the police officer requires that the clearing broker puts up collateral, usually around 2%. So basically, your broker has to give the police officer 2 cents on day one as a form of collateral or insurance. The third and probably most important aspect are market makers. Now, market makers are appointed uh, by the... Explaining uh, the, the market makers is uh, would, be, would be too long and... Uh, so the, the idea, okay, uh, as, as was just explained, is that uh, when, when you're in your Robin Hood app or whatever, uh, the, the actual GameStop stock will be purchased probably later, right? And uh, what happened during the, um, the, the shutdown was the, the, the police officer that, that kind of regulates uh, the trade and collects like the tiny little bit of collateral uh, for each trade was required to increase the collateral to 100%. Uh, so basically now the, uh, the little broker who's buying your GameStop stock for you um, was... was was in a position where they had to pay in full right away, even though they might get the money two days later. Uh, and, you know, we've all owed money. We've all been owed money. Sometimes you don't get paid. Sometimes shit happens. Uh, so, yeah, that is actually a, um, a quite reasonable uh, reason to, to halt uh, the purchasing of a stock because that would put them in an untenable position. Now, the part that is fishy smelling anyway is that uh, the 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 entity <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh the entity that um, that required the collateral to be raised to 100% uh, was in conflict of interest let's just say that uh, they um, you know some friends from that entity had friends were friends with the hedge funds that were, were being short squeezed. So it still smells fishy anyway, but I just wanted to um, present the, uh, 
the counter narrative that uh, it's it's not as simple as well potentially not as simple as um, you know Robin Hood siding with the hedge funds. Uh, there there was a legit financial reason where um, they they would have had to have much larger cash reserves than they actually had. So um, I think that covers everything. Uh, I. Thank, I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, I do these streams every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the bottom, uh, in the comments below. Uh, like and share. Uh, you can also subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next stream. Uh, and yeah, thank you again. Uh, I'll see you soon. Ooh.